Television can be very wrenching at a time such as this. Ms. McAuliffe, now let's go to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tip O'Neill. I'm the minority leader of the House, and it allows us to express our sentiments in this day of sorrow. The gentleman from California. Speaker, I yield to the gentleman from Illinois, uh, Mr. Hayes, one minute. The gentleman from Illinois is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, needless to say, I rise in support of the resolution. I didn't personally know any of the seven people involved in the flight, except as human beings. I'd like to raise the obvious question which has been trickling around in my mind as I hear the speeches here. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Some have already answered this question as they mourn for the families and express sympathy. And as we lament over the next few days and try to find out of the few weeks what caused it, I just hope as we pray and talk to Lord God Almighty that we ask him for guidance and give us a sense of direction so that we might determine our purpose for space exploration. I hope our motivation is something more than just trying to keep pace with the Soviet Union. We do it based on a determination and decision as to what it's going to do to help mankind. I couldn't help but listen at the amount of money that went down with these lives of seven people. $3.2 billion for one spaceship, and how many people who are hungry today that might be helped if we decide to continue, we must understand. And I have not made a decision as to whether or not we should, we should continue or not. I want guidance as to whether or not we go in the right direction. But I think we ought to be able to understand and be motivated for other purposes other than just keep pace with somebody else at the expense and risk of lives. Robots may be used for this purpose. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. Certainly we've had success, and I don't want to ignore it. But I just want us to think and think deeply and pray over this situation and ask the good Lord to give us a sense of direction as to where to go from here. All time is expired. Yeah. Speaker, uh, I yield to the gentleman from uh, Texas uh, one minute. Yeah. Thank the gentleman. Mr. Speaker gentleman and my colleagues, uh, I join the rest of my colleagues today on behalf of my constituency to extend uh, the previous our speaker, Charles Hayes families. of Illinois, indicating some of the soul searching that has already begun in Congress. Each member of the House of Representatives, virtually each, those who are on Capitol Hill right now, each is taking a turn to come up and express himself, herself publicly. And we got in at the end of House Speaker Tip O'Neill's remarks. We're going to be replaying those for you, but we wanted to uh, see and hear the report on uh, Ms. McAuliffe. T-minus 10, 9, 8, Seven, six. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower.
Joining me now here in Atlanta is Carol Hickson, uh, who is affiliated with the Fernbank Science Center. Uh, Center. It's part of the DeKalb County uh, school system in suburban Atlanta. Carol was uh, one of the finalists in the Teacher in Space project. You sat down beside me uh, just a few minutes ago as we were uh, playing the Krista McCullough uh, piece where she was talking about going for it, her enthusiastic spirit. You clearly had some emotion on your face at that time. What are you feeling today? Well, I think, like the rest of the world, devastation at this terrible tragedy, but you nailed Krista's personality exactly when you said enthusiasm, and I hope that this tragedy will not dampen that enthusiasm for space exploration and, and continuing this pioneer and preparing our students for the lives that they will have the opportunity to experience. So you would not agree with uh, Representative Charles Gray, who we heard speaking from the floor of the House of Representatives a few minutes ago, that maybe we should look into using robots or some unmanned space uh, program now. No, I, I think this will certainly take some looking into and, and prevention from anything like that happening in the future, but it is a program in its infancy and it is a pioneer science and I think that it is a step to the future and there are things that simply cannot be done and accomplished by robots and certainly not the spirit of the program. Now the teacher in space program was an idea hatched by the President of the United States this morning's tragedy will certainly now delay the space shuttle program for an indefinite period of time until at least it can be determined what caused this morning's crash. What are your feelings about the Teacher in Space project and what's been lost and what might be recouped? On well, I think certainly the loss is, is the personnel, but the program itself is still very viable. I was at a conference all of last week with the other finalists and we refer to ourselves as a class of 51L and most of the thrust of that conference was how to continue bringing education in the space program not only to our students and communities but um, to the public in general. I think there will be a slowdown until they do discover what caused these uh, mishaps but I'm very positive about the program itself. What will you tell your uh, students? What would you tell students who may be watching you now? Uh, we've had nothing but triumph after triumph after triumph with the space program. Uh, we have uh, young children emulating astronauts. We have the astronaut toys. It's sort of part of our society now. This tragedy, what effect will that have on your students and other students? Well, again, I, th I think there may be a slowdown as far as NASA meeting its scheduled 15 launches for the year, but I don't think the enthusiasm of the youth of the nation will be dampened by it. It's it, um, like we recouped after the, the tragedy in 67. Um, it is very emotional, and this was simply the first step in the Citizen in Space program. A teacher was selected because of the communication skills, but right now the competition is underway for a journalist and the, the citizen in space program is the um, thrust of that particular part of nasa and bringing the program to the general public and people that are not quote astronauts but that can relay the spirit of the program to the general public if you had it to do all over again knowing what you know about today the uh, the tragedy of the challenger flight would you uh go for the teacher in space I certainly project. would. I definitely would. And uh, from here on out, do you have a, are you intimately involved with this? I notice you're wearing uh, your space pin there. Uh, right. Once you get involved, I know from covering uh, NASA uh, missions from Houston in the past, you sort of get caught up you do. in this thing. You do. I have been in aerospace education for about 15 years and it's it's addictive, and um, this was certainly a program that brought it to the forefront to other educators and um, to the public in general. And, and no, it, I don't think it will slow down that effort, um, but it will certainly have a bittersweet application at this point. Senator John Glenn said this morning that it had to happen. It was an inevitability that sooner or later a a crew would be lost, and that has been substantiated by other uh, guests we've had on uh, CNN throughout the morning and early afternoon. Uh, does, uh, wh what is your reaction to that? Well, I, when I applied, I, I heard that same thing, you know, that it's really a new system of transportation. You know something will happen someday, but 
Um, they, did, they did warn you? Well, not, you? not NASA in particular, but just people. You're right. saying when you say right. I've applied for this position, but um, I mean, it's sort of like taking a trip. You know, there's always that risk, and I think NASA is very thorough, and I, I believe they're meticulous in details, and they hold and hold and hold until they think it's perfect, and I feel it's as safe as any other mode of transportation, and certainly worth the effort to learn what we can as far as working and using space in a beneficial way for all of mankind. I know you were upset by all of this today. We appreciate you taking the time Thank to come so in much and for sharing your me. thoughts with us. Carol Hickson of the Fernbank Science Center here in Atlanta. Uh, she was one of the finalists uh, from here in Georgia in the Teacher in Space program. This was the second flight for the uh, mission specialist Ellison U Unizuka. He became an astronaut, as we mentioned before, in 1978, part of a large class of astronauts in that year. In an interview taped last month, Ellison was asked how this flight would differ from his previous flight. This flight is, is a lot different. There's a lot, the activities are different. The events are different. Uh, uh, this flight in itself, uh, for me, creates as much enthusiasm as I had on the first flight. Uh, uh, in fact, even more because there is so much more to get done. Uh, what, what are you looking forward to this time? That maybe you didn't have well, time last time. You know, I, I would be lying to you if I told you that I didn't look out the window on the last flight. But uh, certainly, uh, there are many things that, that you wish you had done more of. Uh, and I'm looking forward to going back. Uh, I hope to be looking out the window a little bit more. Uh, uh, there are some things that that I remember doing that uh, that I never stopped to to think about a little bit, and uh, you know, as far as uh, you know, the Earth observations were concerned. Uh, uh, this time we'll be looking at the stars some, um, and uh, I'm very anxious because of the fact that uh, uh, these are things that that I wanted to do more of. Uh, this time I understand them better. I I know what I'm looking for. Uh, at least I hope I know what I'm looking for. Uh, and, and I think uh, it's going to be a lot more interesting because it's not just looking out the window. This time uh, I'm look, looking for specific sites. I'm looking for specific stars. Uh, I'm going to be looking for that comet. Uh, it's, Everybody's uh, going to be pushing each other out of the way for the window? I'm sure, uh, you know, the, the window time is going to be, a, you know, something that will come at a premium price. <laughs> That was Colonel Ellison Onizuka, a native who was a native of Hawaii.